So what I'm going to show you in this video is how to make a foldable to include all the rules and examples for naming four types of compounds in chemistry, ionic, covalent, binary acid, and oxyacid compounds. So what you're going to need is two pieces of computer paper. You're going to fold both those sheets hot dog with a tab that's left at the end. And then after that, you're going to take both sheets and fold them into a hamburger fold. After you're done doing that, you're going to tape those together so they make a really long, tall booklet. Um, I'll hold it this way so you can see how long it is. And then that's where you're going to label chemical nomenclature along the side. And then with the scissors, you're going to cut free those four sections so you have four flaps. Here's what mine looks like, the front side. On the inside, you'll have the rules and some example problems for each type. So the first type of compound is ionic. You can print little periodic tables so that they can go on the front, um, or you can have a large periodic table, because what you're going to need to realize is that the metals and nonmetals are what make ionic compounds, so you'll need to recognize where those are. Two nonmetals make a type of compound called covalent, and that'll be on your second flap. Hydrogen ions and monatomic nonmetal ions make binary acid compounds, and any polyatomic ion with hydrogen makes an oxyacid compound. So you're also going to need a list of polyatomic ions or have this memorized. Polyatomic ions can be part of ionic also. So those are the things that you're going to need before we even fill in any examples to this type of process called chemical nomenclature. So with this foldable what you're going to have is you're going to have how to recognize the compound on the front with a periodic table included. And then on the inside you're going to have the rules and the examples for each of those compounds. You can find more examples and the rules on my website at schmidtchemistry.weebly.com. I'm going to go through four examples quickly for each. The first one we're going to have the element zinc as an ion in a 2 plus form, and then phosphide is a 3 minus, which is predicted off of the position on the periodic table. The rule that you have to follow here is that the charge has to be zero of the compound. So if I have two phosphides, I have 6 minus. And I can get 6 plus, but I would need 3 zinc ions as cations to balance the charge. So then in the formula, chemists will say that there's 3 zinc and 2 phosphides to make zinc phosphide a neutral compound. The next one you need to look at your polyatomic ions list because nitrate is not on the periodic table. Calcium, however, is and has the predicted 2 plus charge. To make this one equal 0, you're going to need 2 nitrates and 1 calcium. So you have a total of 2 minus and 2 plus. And then when you write this one in formula way, you have to have a parenthesis around the nitrate so that you denote that there's two nitrates. The first compound had five ions, and this one has three, a calcium and two nitrate ions. When you name it, you don't need any Roman numerals yet because calcium can only come at a two plus charge. However, when we get to iron and then the next one, PB, which is lead, you will need to use Roman numerals or the Latin name to denote which one you have. Transition metals are the most common ones that have two charges. In this case, we're saying that we have iron 3 plus, and then the sulfide is off the periodic table, which has a predicted 2 minus. Very similar to our first example, except for the cations are 6 plus, and the anions are 6 minus, but there are three sulfides and two iron. You do not need parentheses, so you say two iron and three sulfides because they're not polyatomic. The last one we have PB, which is lead, but we don't know which lead we have. Typically it's two or four. We do know that phosphate is a polyatomic ion off of our list that you may or may not have to memorize. And the formula says we have four phosphates, so I'm going to write phosphate four times, denoting that there's four of them in there in that formula which is 12 minus. So that means all of the cations have to equal 12 plus and our formula says that there are three. So if you take 12 divided by three you'll get four plus. So when we name it we're going to say that we have the lead four with Roman numerals and then phosphate. You could use Latin naming and for this case you would say plum and then ic is the higher of the two charges, and us is the lower. But we have 4 plus, which is the higher charge. So you'd say plummet phosphate. When you move on to covalent, there are no ions. There's no polyatomic um, ions to memorize. You just look at the two nonmetals that are in the formula, and prefixes will tell you how many you have. 
So nitrogen dioxide is nitrogen and two oxygens. Silicon with chlorine here is tetrachloride because there are four chlorines in there. And then you'd say chloride. The next one we have bromine and then pentafluoride means five of those fluorines. The last one is two chlorines, so dichlorine. You don't change the name of the first one. And then heptaoxide for seven oxygens. Chemists may get rid of the vowel A and just say heptoxide. I'm going to go through four examples of binary and oxyacids. For the binary acids, they all contain the hydrogen cation and then some monatomic anion off of the periodic table, in this case bromide. And then the rule state turn I into ic and then add the word hydro in the front of the name. So it's hydrobromic acid. The next one, what that means is we have the hydrogen ion and then fluoric came from fluoride, which is F1 minus, again, predicted off its placement on the periodic table. And then because it's plus and minus one, you just put those two elements together to make the compound HF. The next one is showing us that we had two hydrogen ions necessary to balance the SE, which is a two minus charge, and its name is selenide, again, predicted off its position on the table to be a two minus. So that turns into ick, and you add the word hydro in the front, so hydro, selen, and then ick, acid. Our last one, we know that we have the sulfide ion, again, two minus, predicted off its place on the table. And we will need two hydrogen ions, again, to balance that charge. So that one will be H2S, and again, I turn into ick, and so this one turns into hydro, sulfur, and then chemists will add in the UR and then add in ic acid so that the sound of the name is good. Next is oxyacids. They contain oxygen-containing polyatomic ions called oxyanions. Again, hydrogen is always the cation. And in this case, NO3 or nitrate is the anion. And eights turn into ic when you name them. And you don't add hydro for these, so it's just nitric and then acid. The next one we know that we have what's called the hypochlorite ion. And again, the rule state ites turn into us. So the name of it will be hypochlorus and then acid. And then the formula will just be HClO because again, it's just plus one and minus one. The next one we have to work backwards, we have sulfuric, that came from sulfate, which is SO4, two minus, again, either off your chart that you've memorized or that you look up. There's a hydrogen ion in each position for the cation. In this case, we'll need two to balance the two minus charge. So uh, sulfuric acid is written that way, whereas hydrosulfuric is this way. So they sound similar, but they're different. The last one is telling us that we have three hydrogen ions in this formula, and one of these, which has to be a three minus, which is called phosphite. And so again, because it ends in I-T-E, we're going to change that to O-U-S. And this is another one where chemists will add in some of the element vowels that were in there in letters, so phosphorus, and then the word acid.